This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. In October 2006, a team of British and US scientists had demonstrated a breakthrough physical phenomena then only known to science fiction, the world's first invisibility cloak. The team led by Professor Sir John Pendry of Imperial College in London, in collaboration with Duke University, created a small device about 12 centimeters across that had the intrinsic property of redirecting microwave radiation around it, hiding the device within a small distortion and rendering it almost invisible to microwave detection by reflection. What made this demonstration particularly remarkable was that this characteristic of microwave invisibility was not derived from the chemical composition of the object, but rather the structure of its constituent materials. The team had demonstrated the cloaking properties of a metamaterial. A metamaterial is a material purposely engineered to possess one or more properties that are not possible with traditional, naturally occurring materials. Metamaterials characteristically gain these properties from their structure rather than directly from their base composition. The structure is formed by a repeating arrangement of elemental units, which themselves are typically formed from composite materials composed of plastics and metals. The geometry, size, and arrangement of these elemental structures determine both the wavelength and properties of how a metamaterial influences electromagnetic radiation. What makes metamaterials so astonishing is the very nature of how they manipulate electromagnetic waves. Radiation can be bent, amplified, absorbed, or blocked in a manner that far supersedes what is possible with conventional materials. One of the more notable properties of most metamaterials is the unusual way in which refraction occurs within them. Refraction is the change in direction of a propagating wave as it passes from one medium to another. While refraction occurs within all waves, including kinetic waves such as with sound, it's a phenomenon most typically associated with light. How a wave is refracted is determined by its change in speed between media and the initial direction of the wave's propagation. For electromagnetic radiation, refraction can be determined by Snell's law. This law states that for a given pair of media, the ratio of the signs of the angle of incidence and angle of refraction is equal to the ratio between the wave's propagation velocities in both media. When the initial medium is defined as a vacuum, this resultant ratio is known as the material's refractive index. The refractive index of a material varies with the radiation's wavelength, which in turn also causes the angle of the refraction to vary. This is known as dispersion, and it is the phenomenon that causes a prism to divide white light into its constituent colors. This redirection of light within a medium through refraction is also a key principle of how lenses function. Every known natural material possesses a positive refractive index for electromagnetic waves. Metamaterials, however, are capable of unintuitive and unnatural negative refraction. They can effectively reverse the propagation of an electromagnetic wave within them. Because an electromagnetic wave is created by the coupling of the electric field and the magnetic field, for a metamaterial to possess such an unnatural refractive index, two parameters that determine the propagation of these fields in matter are manipulated, permittivity and magnetic permeability. Permittivity is a measure of how a material polarizes in response to an applied electric field, while magnetic permeability is the measure of magnetization that a material obtains in response to an applied magnetic field. Both of these parameters also represent the energy stored within the material as their respective fields are applied and combined. They determine a material's refractive index. Most known materials have a positive permittivity value. Those that are electrical insulators but can be easily electrically polarized are known as dielectric and exhibit relatively high permittivity. Certain materials such as metals and plasmas by comparison exhibit negative permittivity at specific frequency bands. However, no material that can achieve negative values for magnetic permeability has ever been discovered. Metamaterials are engineered out of unit cells that are organized into a repeating structure in a manner analogous to a crystal. These unit cells are composed of traditional materials with natural permittivity and magnetic permeability properties. They are also sized to be a fraction of the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation they operate on. 
As an electromagnetic wave propagates through the metamaterial, each unit responds to the radiation, and the collective results of these interactions create an emergent material response to the electromagnetic wave that supersedes what is possible with a natural material. The first mention of the properties of metamaterials was in 1904 with the conceptualization of negative wave propagation by British mathematician Horace Lamb and British physicist Arthur Schuster. However, both saw the phenomena as purely theoretical and did not think it could be practically achieved. Forty years later, Soviet physicist Leonard Mandelstam, while studying the nature of electromagnetic wave propagation, would examine the characteristics of materials demonstrating negative refraction. From his experiments, he discovered that the phenomena was prevalent in materials composed of a crystal lattice. By the late 1960s, several research teams would go on to further study the negative propagation properties of crystals, as well as the practical implication of the concept of negative permittivity and negative magnetic permeability. Finally, in 1967, Soviet physicist Viktor Gagorgovich Veselago of the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology would propose the first theoretical model for a metamaterial. Veselago's research included producing methods for predicting the phenomena of refraction reversal, in which he coined the term left-handed materials, as well as exploring theoretical models for materials that possess both negative permittivity and negative permeability, or double negative materials. Over the next three decades, these would remain predominantly abstract as the constituent materials and computing power needed to effectively design and experiment with metamaterials were lacking. As the framework for metamaterials was being developed at the theoretical level, the related field of microwave engineering and its application to antenna design began to rapidly evolve after World War II. From this, the development of artificial dielectrics during the 1950s and 1960s began to open up new ways to shape microwave radiation, especially for radar antenna design. Artificial dielectrics are composite materials made from arranged arrays of conductive shapes or particles, supported in a non-conductive matrix. Similar to metamaterials, artificial dielectrics are designed to have a specific electromagnetic response behaving as an engineered dielectric material. American electrical engineer and the first director of NASA's Electronic Research Center, Winston E. Koch, analytically studied how radiation propagated through varying geometric shapes and particles set both in isolation and in repeating patterns. Under his guidance, methods were developed to analyze and tune the effective permittivity and permeability of these structures, allowing for the development of various configurations of microwave lenses. However, due to the scope of NASA's research goals at the time, this research never reached into the realm of negative coefficients, stopping short on achieving true metamaterials. By the late 1990s, the first attempts at migrating metamaterials from theory to reality began to emerge. And while the long-established principles that formed them would remain the focal point of ongoing research, English theoretical physicist John Pendry would soon become a leading contributor to the field by bringing the properties of metamaterials from concept to reality. Pendry's expertise in solid-state physics led him to be contracted by Marconi Material Technologies in order to explain the physics of how their naval stealth material actually worked. Pendry had discovered that the microwave absorption of the material did not come from the chemical structure of the carbon it was made from, but rather the long, thin shape of the fibers. From this observation, Pendry realized that by changing a material's internal structure at scales that were smaller than a specific band of radiation, he could alter how that material interacted with it. From this observation, the term metamaterial was coined due to the observed properties seemingly going beyond what was naturally occurring. Pendry would explore this concept further with an idea for a composite material that could mimic the properties of a conventional magnetic substance. He theorized that such a material could be manufactured from tiny loops of copper wire embedded in a fiberglass substrate. Known as a split ring resonator, these loops would create specific magnetic responses based on their size and geometry, effectively becoming tunable magnetic resonators. The implication of Pendry's idea was something unseen before in material sciences. He had figured out how to manipulate a material's electric and magnetic response effectively allowing for method to engineer how electromagnetic radiation moves through a material. 
Pendry would go on to publish the results of his work in 1999, quickly attracting the attention of physicists worldwide. Among them, David Smith, an experimental physicist at the University of California at San Diego, would team up with colleague Willie Padilla to attempt to construct and analyze Pendry's theoretical device. Smith and Padilla had constructed an array of very small coils that could be tuned in such a way that when illuminated by a source of radiation, the material behaved as though it were naturally magnetic. Fully realizing Pendry's concept, the team would go on to publish their findings in May of 2000. Around the same time, physicist Valerie Browning, a newly appointed DARPA program manager, empowered by the success of Smith and Padilla, convinced DARPA to launch their own initiative into metamaterials research. Bringing to bear $40 million in funding, massive computational resources, and access to precise microfabrication techniques, Smith and Padilla would quickly be folded into the DARPA project, leading its new advanced materials program. By late 2000, Pendry had proposed the idea of using metamaterials to construct a superlens. Superlenses are theoretical lenses that can operate beyond the diffraction limit of a traditional lens, allowing near-field rays, which normally decay due to its diffraction limit, to be brought into focus, allowing for sub-wavelength imaging. Though superlenses were initially considered impossible to construct, Pendry theorized that one could be developed employing the negative refractive index behavior of a metamaterial. However, in practice, this proved to be an incredibly difficult task due to the resonant nature of metamaterials, which made them highly dispersive to propagating radiation. They were also highly sensitive to the parameters of refraction chosen, which limited a design to a very narrow wavelength band of operation. Furthermore, engineering metamaterials with a negative permeability at the wavelengths of light was not feasible at the time. This limited experimentation on the concept to microwave radiation. By 2003, Pendry's theory was first experimentally demonstrated at microwave frequencies by exploiting the negative permittivity of metals to microwaves. In 2005, two independent groups had reported success at producing Pendry's superlens at the ultraviolet range, using thin layers of silver illuminated with UV light to produce photographs of objects smaller than the wavelength used. Other experiments had also demonstrated the use of metamaterial microwave superlensing to improve upon MRI imaging. Shortly after, a team at Berkeley, led by physicist Jian Zheng, created the first optical superlens from an ultra-thin layer of silver with a resolution that was several times better than that of the best optical microscopes. Two years later, a variant of Zhang's lens was able to resolve two nanowires separated by 150 nanometers, a gap narrower than a single wave of visible light. In 2004, at a lecture, Pendry had flippantly presented another theoretical implication of the properties of metamaterials, that they could be designed for cloaking. DARPA took these ideas very seriously, and shortly thereafter, David Smith would team up with Pendry under DARPA funding to build a cloaking device. From this collaboration, the first functional invisibility cloak that stared microwave radiation around a copper cylinder, hiding it from detection, was constructed in 2006. In the wake of Pendry and Smith's success, research that attempted to push cloaking into the visible spectrum would be spearheaded by Zhang's research team at Berkeley, where one of the most ambitious 3D nanofabrication labs geared towards the creation of metamaterials would be established. By mid-2008, Zhang's group took the first steps toward creating an optical invisibility cloak by fabricating a nanoscale three-dimensional optical metamaterial. Composed of 21 alternating sheets of silver and a glass-like substance, the material referred to as a fishnet caused light to bend in unusual ways as it moves through the alternating layers. A few months later, Pendry and Smith would refine their microwave cloaking experiments further by creating a device that could mask an object beneath it from microwave detection. What made this particularly notable was that it operated on a wider band of radiation than their previous attempts. Despite the ongoing research and relative success with microwave radiation, to date, optical cloaking still remains elusive due to the technical challenges of manipulating light within a metamaterial. Light moving through materials typically get absorbed until at some point the energy of the radiation falls off, making it a challenge to guide its propagation in a useful way. 
In addition, creating nanoscale structures that can interact with the shorter wavelengths of light pushes current nanofabrication techniques to its limit. Beyond these technical challenges, cloaking also suffers from a major practical flaw. By bending radiation around a cloaked object, it also becomes impossible for the object to observe the world around it. Still, despite these limitations, research into the radiation warping properties of metamaterials have opened up new technological possibilities. Its principles have even migrated into the manipulation of acoustic waves and other non-electromagnetic radiative realms. And as nanotechnology advances and the ability to create structures far smaller than the wavelength of light emerge, an entire new world of controlling the electromagnetic spectrum in ways that once seemed impossible awaits. The first form of stealth technology was strongly based on a mathematical framework for understanding electromagnetic radiation, enabling scientists to model and predict the behavior of how radar interfaced with aircraft. Today, an understanding of these complex, abstract ideas are key to pushing stealth into new realms of real-world application. Have you ever wanted to build upon your foundational understanding of mathematics and explore these more complex concepts? Well, there's a free and easy way to get started immediately. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is my my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. Brilliant is constantly developing their courses to offer the most visual, hands-on approach possible to make mastering the key concepts behind today's technology effective and engaging. A great starting point I highly recommend is Brilliant's Solving Equations course. This intuitive progression of visual math lessons help you develop a solid understanding of both solving equations equations and visualizing their implications using interactive exercises, allowing you to better grasp mathematical relationships. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started today. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days and start learning STEM today, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.